What is going on guys? Welcome back to your 16th C++ tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk to you guys about something called the if statement. Now the if statement is basically a simple way to have your computer program make a very simple decision. So before when we were programming we built simple programs and it pretty much just ran line after line after line of code without question. So that's nice and all but sometimes you want to have your computer program make a simple choice for example you might have some code that you only want to run sometimes and you're saying alright why would I even put it in there if I only want to run it sometimes well for example if you're making a website and you had a message on there that said hello Bucky well you would only want to show that message whenever I logged in you wouldn't want to show it whenever a guy named Tommy logged in or a girl named Jessica logged in. So you would say, if the user is Bucky, then say, hello, Bucky. So you can see that, unlike before, when we just built a program and you ran it from top to bottom, now we have different routes, different choices that our computer program can make. And the basic, basic decision that each computer can make is made using the if statement. So the syntax for the if statement is incredibly simple. You go ahead and type the keyword if and in between parentheses right after you're going to give it a test. Now go ahead and add curly brackets and if that test is true then it's going to run the code whatever you put in here. If it's not true then it's not going to run the code. So you're going to say alright um, the test is, is the user Bucky? And the code would be, say, hello Bucky on the screen or something like that. So that's a basic example, but of course that isn't real code. So let's go ahead and make a real program that actually works. So the basic, what people typically do is, they have a variable first of all. So let's go ahead and make int x and set it equal to 10. So now we have a variable equal to 10. They might want to test this to see um, is this variable equal to 10? So go ahead and say if x and now in order to make these simple tests we use something called comparison operators and when you're testing numbers there are six different ways you can compare numbers. I know you think is it equal or not equal but there's a lot more. First of all you can test is x equal to 10? Is x not equal to 10? Is x less than 10? Greater than 10? less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And let's go ahead and test it besides something other than 10. So we know x is equal to 10. If we want to test if it's the same as 10, we go ahead and write equal equal 10. And you're saying, all right, first of all, slow down. This doesn't make sense. Why would you not just write if x equals 10? Because that makes sense. Well, the single equal sign is they already reserved that for setting a value equal to a variable. So if you did this right here, it would think that you were trying to set x equal to 10 and your program is not going to work right. So that's why whenever you're comparing a variable and a value, you need that double equal sign. So this means, all right, test if x is equal to 10. And if it is, let's just go ahead and give it something stupid. C out um, omg I am preggy. That means pregnant and ghetto talk. So let's go ahead and NL and let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Build and run and on the screen it says OMG I am preggy. And why did it do this? Because we had a variable x and it was equal to 10 and then we said alright if x is equal to 10 then go ahead and print this out on the screen and it was so it printed it out. But if you had something like if x is equal to you know 87 now we try and build it and run it, you see that our computer program didn't print it out because 10 is not equal to 87. So you're saying, all right, I know how to test whether a value is equal to a variable, but what if I want to test if they're not equal? I want to make sure that these values are not equal. Well, the sign for that is explanation point equal sign. This means, all right, if x is not equal to 87, print this out. And it's going to print it out because is 10 equal to 87? No, that doesn't even make sense. So it's going to go ahead and print that out. So that's why we get OMG I am preggy. So aside from that, let me go over the basics less than and greater than. If x is less than 87, is 10 less than 87? Yes. And by the way, whenever we have a test and that test is true, we say true. 
whenever the test is wrong, we say false. So is 10 less than 87? Yes, 10 is less than 87. So we call this test true. And since it's true, it goes ahead and prints it out. OMG, I am preggy. Now let's go ahead and be like, is 10 greater than 87? No, 10 is not greater than 87. So that's why it didn't print it out right there. So aside from that, there are two other simple ones I want to go over uh, with you guys. There is less than or equal to. So if you had something like, is 10 less than 10? And you just had a basic less than, then you try to run it and it wouldn't work because 10 is not less than 10, 10 is the same as 10. Well, what if you want to test if a value is less than or equal to another variable? Well, we go ahead and we have our variable 10. Is it less than 10? Nope. Or is it equal to 10? Yes. So this is indeed going to print out OMG, I am preggy. And of course, there is greater than or equal to, but I'm not even going to show you an example because it's pretty self-explanatory what we have. So aside from testing a variable against a value, I just want to tell you guys that you can go ahead and test two uh, variables such as 43. So now we're going to say, all right, is x um, greater than or equal to y, aka is 10 greater than or equal to 43. Let's go ahead and build and run that. And we see that 10 is not greater and it's not equal to 43. So we can test two variables, and we can even test two numbers, like is 5 greater or equal to 3. And we go ahead and run that, and we print out OMG, I am preggy. But this testing two values is the least common thing. People, I don't want to say always, but I've never seen it where people had two values in here. Um, it's either one variable or two variables. If we go ahead and we just had this code right here, then it would make sense just to forget this whole if statement just like that. Unless you don't know how to compare numbers, then you would have a problem. Then you shouldn't even be watching this tutorial. But for now, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the if statement and how you can use it to make a basic decision. Again, technical terms, whenever your test is positive, we call that a true test. Whenever your test is negative and it doesn't make sense, we call that false. So the code inside the if block is only going to run when your test is true, as you just saw. And again, we have two equal signs for equals. Explanation point equals means not equals. Greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to. So now you are a pro with the if statement. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you in the next tutorial.